Good morning, praise the Lord. Today, 7th February, we'll talk about uh, Judah. Judah, the fourth son of uh, Jacob and mainly the forefather of David, from whom our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was born into this world. When God chooses one person in his work, since no human being is perfect in this world, he gives that person ability to perform the job allotted to him or her. If his brothers, uh, Simeon and Levi, were marked by cruelty, Judah was marked by avarice, who was very fond of money. We see this in his dealing with his brother Joseph. He is saying, And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites. Let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh. And his brethren was, were content. See in this uh, sentence, if we notice, we see both avarice and hypocrisy. He is saying that he is very, he, as if he is very fond of his brother. At the same time, he is uh, having that uh, eye on the money. In 37-35, we see his hypocrisy when he lied to Jacob concerning Joseph's true fate. Ultimately, he had to pay for his deceit. In Genesis 38, the moral result of what he had done works out in his life. He becomes involved with unbelievers. First with a certain Adilamite Hira and later on he married a Canaanite woman, Shua. So in this manner, Judah finds himself in a completely false position and doing everything against the Israelite law. We then have an account of his shameful treatment of Tamar, his daughter-in-law. Initially, he makes a promise to her which he never intended to fulfill. This we see in 38th chapter 11. Then whilst away from home on a journey after his wife died, he succumbed to temptation and committed fornic fornication with uh, his uh, daughter-in-law. He then further co compounds his sin by condemning her to death when he himself had been guilty of the same thing. The only saving feature in this sordid affair is that he was confronted with his son, a sin, and was prepared to acknowledge it and confess it, an essential step on the road to forgiveness. All human beings, we commit some sin or the other, but we get forgiveness only when we confess it. This we see in 38.26. We'll see more of Tamar tomorrow since she, she is in the genealogy of Jesus Christ. We can never understand God's plans. The next time we read of Judah is in 22 years later in Egypt. From what he says, we have an indication that he has changed completely because he shows himself truthful and prepared to act as surety for Benjamin. We see this in 43rd chapter 3 to 10. Later, as spokesman for the brothers before Joseph, he shows that he is now completely changed for the better. No longer he is marked by dishonesty and hypocrisy. Joseph was ready to be reconciled to his brothers. We see the grace of God in Judah's life and how God was working continuously in his life to make him ready in his work. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for teaching us about Judah. And help us not to be like him, hypocrites and people with avarice. Lord, help us to be able to work in your kingdom. In Jesus' precious name I ask. Amen. God bless you.